Hello, good evening, uh, all the members of the Robotics Society and others who are actually attending this um, webinar. So this is the fourth webinar uh, organized by the Robotics Society. And I'm very, very happy today that we have a very eminent speaker, uh, Professor uh, Tomahiro Shibata from uh, Kyushu Institute of Technology with us today. And uh, it was, uh, we, we were very lucky to have uh, Professor Shibata uh, agreeing to deliver the talk today. He's a very busy person, uh, but uh, he has been uh, with uh, the Robotic Society for quite long. I think he was there as a uh, starting member also uh, in the Robotic Society, and uh, he has been uh, helping us in many ways for our conferences, workshops, and that. So I'm very happy to uh, welcome uh, Professor Shibata to this uh, webinar. So let me briefly introduce Professor Shibata before I hand over the mic to uh, Shibata for the uh, speech. So Professor uh, Tomohiro Shibata is a professor at the Kyushu Institute of Technology, Japan, and heading the Human and Social Intelligence Systems Lab. He has a PhD in Information Engineering from the University of Tokyo. He has more than 20 years of teaching and research experience in the field of robotics. Professor Shibata is a very active researcher and published extensively in the last 20 years. He is the editor or associate editor to many of the top journals and has received numerous awards for his scholarly achievements. So I'm not going to list all the awards. He has got so many awards, actually best paper awards, best researcher awards and so on. But more importantly, Professor Shibata is a founding member of the Robotic Society and has been very active with the TRS activities. He is a member of the TRS Governing Council and helps TRS in establishing global uh, relations. With this very brief introduction, I uh, request Professor Shibata to deliver the talk. Professor Shibata, you can start. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Asokan, for your very, very kind uh, introduction to me. Yes, uh, I have been working. Uh, so it's it's really honored and joyful that uh, as I've been working with you. And uh, uh, this time, so you have been, and we actually uh, have been living in a very difficult uh, you know, years uh, because of COVID-19. And I hope uh, all of you are, are not suffering, have not been suffering too much uh, you know, from the COVID-19 situation. Yes, uh, I'm living in Kitakyushu. I'm speaking from Japan, uh, Kitakyushu city in Japan. And here uh, we are uh, daily. So we'll get, uh, let's say, uh, you know, five to 10, some infected people, but uh, almost stabilized and we are okay. And I have, I will introduce some uh, of my students later and I'm, uh, and they are working happily here. I mean, I mean, Indian students, okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for kind of introduction. And as, as he introduced, I am the co-member of, uh, sorry, uh, you know, a committee member for and governing council member uh, of uh, the Robotics Society of Japan, and also executive board member of Japanese Neural Network Society and the governing council, council additional member of the Robotics Society. And in addition to that, uh, today's title is Robots for Assisted Living and uh, Related to this title, I have been the core member of Living Lab Project of the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare. And also I'm the uh, I'm a working group member for the National Strategic Special Zone of Kitakyushu City. So um, not only for research, but also innovation uh, to introduce robots or some apparatus, ITC, ICT devices to daily lives uh, to save Japan and to save such a, a country having a super aging problem. So uh, fortunately, uh, I've been working uh, with uh, not only in my students uh, institute, but also with the Kitakitu City and also uh, Ministry of Health. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I, should, I shouldn't talk too much. Uh, but anyway, just I would like to show this uh, picture. And this was taken in advances in robotics in 2013. And here, Professor Shishidatta here, and Professor Saha here, and I'm here. Sorry, so this was created before, so I need to search for Professor Asoka probably here, and, and Raji also. I'm sorry, but I haven't prepared very well. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad to be involved in a member of the Robotic Society and that Robotic Society. 
Yes. Okay. So uh, this movie is showing our campus in Kitakishu Science and Research Park. And uh, this is our campus, QTEC. So abbreviation is QTEC, Kyushu Institute of Technology, has three campuses and it has 111 uh, years history. But uh, this is a very new campus. It has only a 20, uh, less than 20 years old. And uh, we are only a graduate school. So uh, that's why uh, the building is, is not so big. But the campus and the science and the research park is beautiful and consisting of uh, Waseda Graduate School and also Kitakyushu City University, a part of Kitakyushu City University, and we are collaborating. So we are quite active here. But uh, usually, I, uh, usually in this kind of talk in India, I ask you uh, if you know Yasukawa Electronic Corporation. Okay. And uh, I think uh, in, in the last AIR, uh, Yasukawa, I think, uh, was one of the uh, sponsors, I think, if, if I'm correct, my memory is correct. Uh, anyway, so why I'm showing this is Yasukawa, the, the headquarter of Yasukawa Electric Corp is in Kitakyushu City. And uh, so in Japan, Yasukawa and also FANA, they are two very big, you know, so industrial robots uh, produ uh, production companies, and they are uh, exporting robots a lot. One of the founders of QTEC, his name was uh, Keiichiro Yasukawa, right? So, so, so it, at the beginning, robot, robots were not there, but now so Yasukawa has a very, uh, became a very robotic industry. Okay, so that's why QTEC and Yasukawa have been collaborating uh, quite often. And now we are strongly collaborating. Yes, that's true. Okay, and uh, this is uh, my laboratory's member. And you see some Indians, okay? And here, so uh, Ravi Joshi, uh, so who was, uh, who worked for under uh, uh, mechanical engineering department, Professor Saha. And uh, so he joined my master course and he went to a P a doctor doctoral course and finally, last year he got a PhD, and now he's gone. And uh, he is happily working in a Japanese uh, startup company called Tech Magic. So, what I want to say here is, so uh, my laboratory is quite global, and uh, uh, Jap Japanese students and the foreign, so international students are uh, trying to collaborate, cooperate always. Okay, so let me move into the uh, central issue, and the title is Robots for Assisted uh, Assisted Living. So why my background is actually in robotics and also uh, computational neuroscience. And why I, I've been working for these 10 years for uh, assistive technologies. The reason came from my uh, mother. Actually, my mother had, uh, has been Parkinsonian for more than 20, you know, around 25 years. And uh, I needed to take care of her a lot. And, and also uh, because uh, we knew a lot of great technologies are there uh, which, which can uh, help them. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, so those technologies are not easily introduced to the society. So that's why I'm working in that uh, innovation area too. So uh, this uh, slide, the, the most important message from this slide is uh, currently we are here around 20, you know, 20, 21. And you see the Japan uh, has been always the top uh, you know, in terms of aging rates in the world. And your country uh, de depicted here in, uh, you know, this uh, blue uh, you know, line, and uh, still uh, it's okay. And this slide shows the population pyramid of Japan. And, uh, you know, so you see the younger generation is uh, being decreased a lot. And we hit the um, maximum of the population already and uh, uh, the population is being decreased. And in your country, uh, of course, it's quite different situation, but uh, you see uh, 15 years ago, so you see very beautiful triangle uh, shape here. But now you see, you know, so uh, again, this is beautiful like Taj Mahal, but uh, you see, you know, a very different uh, shape in population pyramid compared to the ones before, okay? So which means uh, in, even in your country, the younger generation is uh, slowly, slowly being uh, decreased. But uh, uh, currently, so you don't see such a problem, but uh, uh, the, the uh, a very uh, critical thing uh, from my point of view is here, a report released by the United Nations and also 
uh, NGO Help Age in India uh, suggests that the number of elderly person is expected to grow to 173 million by 2026. So 2026 is approaching quite quickly. And uh, do you know the population of uh, Japan? So it's around 125, 20, I think six or something like that, million. So uh, you have already much more uh, elderly people uh, rather than uh, the total population in Japan. Okay, so uh, maybe you might not so interested in uh, the assistive technologies for elderly people, but uh, uh, I think it's so we can still collaborate and some of you are uh, quite interested in, in your family or in your uh, neighbors. So in, for example, or yeah, neighbors. And also you might want to help some uh, injured people or, this, uh, or people having disability, okay? And you might want to assist some uh, people who are working in ag agricultural field or some uh, difficult or dangerous field. Today, I'm going to talk about and, and, and introduce uh, some technologies for the elderly and having some disability. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, so I hope you see some overlapping uh, technologies, overlapping uh, parts. So during my study, for your interest. Kitakishu city is a local but big city and uh, because uh, it developed quite early so in the past so now it's quickly uh, you know aging and uh, the aging rate so is quite uh, one of the highest so in Japan here so that's why so Kitakishu city office they have been trying to introduce robots and ICT for many years already right so the, this slide shows some robots, okay? So for transfer assistance, Yasukawa developed only, not only Yasukawa, but this is an example of Yasukawa, okay? It's uh, this kind of lift, uh, robotic lift. And also nowadays in Japan, this kind of uh, suit, uh, suit-like uh, transfer assist devices are quite uh, getting popular. Although of course it's difficult to introduce uh, to the uh, most of the nursing care houses uh, instead of these robots so it's quite natural that uh, uh, this kind of you know monitor monitoring uh, devices and also uh, recording nursing care recording systems by using uh, a vision and also by using ict technologies those are actually uh, have been introduced much much better than uh, the the case of robots so uh, you're feeling, you know, so, so many robots there. Yes, actually, uh, you have in your life, uh, in particular in your, uh, you know, so uh, when you are aging, there are different stages according, according to the care you need, okay? According to the age and according to the care you need and also according to the abilities, okay? So initially, you are quite healthy, and uh, but uh, you are aging. So uh, in that period, Preventive care technologies is really important. Okay, ah, okay. So this orange line uh, indicates that one, of, you know, so imaginary ideal uh, abilities that you want to have. Okay, according to the age, you want to keep it. Okay, for a long time as much as much as possible. But unfortunately, you have some events in your life, and you need you need to have a rehabilitation. You might need you know life function assist assist at the end in your life, okay? So uh, our aim to introduce those devices is to, is to uh, make your abilities, you know, so uh, in your life, being toward uh, the orange, this uh, emotionally uh, desirable orange line, okay? By using these devices. Okay, so, and again, there are so many uh, devices shown here, and some of them are, you know, so this one uh, is product, and this one actually is uh, taken from my collaborator, but others are from my laboratory, okay? And uh, for example, preventive care. So you, it's really important to keep using walking assist, even if you are, your walking is not so stable. Okay, I, I'll talk about, about it later. Uh, so, and so 
uh, from now on, I'm going to talk about our working uh, assistive devices. And, you know, so in, at the end, so you, you have, when you have lots of problems in your, in your physical and the cognitive abilities, then uh, you need, you might need these kind of, you know, so quite full assistive robots, okay? And actually, uh, sorry, so this uh, movie is running already, and this movie is showing the, our collaborative you know, outcome uh, from the collaborative projects with Professor Ashishidatta. So Professor Ashishidatta's laboratory actually developed this kind of, you know, so exoskeleton uh, composed of four uh, designed by four mechanisms. And uh, actually, we are good at measuring uh, so EMZ signals and also analyzing EMZ signals to uh, acquire, to extract the motor intention of the user. So in this movie, the movie is showing, you know, uh, the actually uh, the mirror motion or to the you know so this left hand so this uh, robot is moved according to the motion uh, you know so to the left hand but actually what I'm doing is we are measuring the EMG electromyogram of the forearm from the uh, left forearm and uh, extract the motor intention and it's sent such estimation is sent to this robotic device and it is controlled. So you can ignore these, uh, you know, electrodes. So these electrodes are just checking for checking. No, actually, a muscle contractions are uh, intentional. Muscle contractions are being occurred in the right muscle. Okay. Anyway, so uh, this can be used for uh, rehabilitation. But at, at the end of your life, so you, need, you might need these, you know, so quite highly functional robots. So I'm, I'm going to also talk about addressing assist. Uh, we are actually, uh, na we named it closing assistance robot. So I'm going to uh, introduce it later on. Okay, so our first issue, first topic is about walking assist devices. And this is particularly uh, useful for preventive care and daily rehabilitation. Okay, so this slide actually tells the benefit of welfare devices for elderly care, in particular Rolator. Okay, or Walker. Uh, this slide was given by Dr. Matsumoto of AIST, and this tells long-term Rolator users tend to keep their care level. Okay, so uh, this might be quite uh, so intuitive. So uh, uh, this slide shows some uh, statistics, uh, statistical result using the receipt analysis uh, from our Japan, Japanese long-term care insurance system, okay? So I think 10 million uh, receipts, receipts were analyzed and the, these are the results, okay? So uh, through eight years, if you keep using, uh, you know, raw later, then your, you know, physical ability, you know, I mean, actually uh, this is, this says care level, but it's difficult to explain it. So uh, let's say uh, your uh, physical ability you know, can keep or can get better, okay? But otherwise, if you, you know, uh, don't use a rollator, and if you use uh, some uh, wheelchair, then uh, your ability gets worse. Sorry, uh, in this case, please look at the legend. So red corresponds to a worse, and green, same, and blue, better, okay? So through 80 years, you know, in this case, in the right panel, you know, it gets much worse compared to the left case. So, uh, intuitively, uh, you know, so if, if you feel uh, some problems in your walking, but uh, try to use Rollator and uh, the, that's good for, uh, uh, it works like rehabilitation for you. Okay, I'll show you later. So we, in our laboratory, we are also developing a, a assistive walker, but I'll show you it later. And let me change the uh, device. So that is a pneumatic device, a walking assistive device for Parkinson's disease patients, okay? So the aim is, so please look at this video. So this is an example of Parkinson's disease walking. And now he got gate freezing here and tend to fall down to, to the ground. So uh, this phenomenon is called freezing of gate in patients with Parkinson's disease, okay? So in this case, our target has been uh, Parkinson's disease patients. And uh, our aim is uh, not to cause uh, this kind of freezing gait 
as much as possible by using our uh, working assist device. So again, I'm showing the case of example of uh, gate freezing. Now you see, you know, he has significant gate freezing phenomena. Okay, but now, oops. Now you see he's cycling. Okay, so he's his pedaling is perfect. Keep he he can keep doing it. Okay, this is amazing, but uh, not amazing uh, in the Parkinson uh, disease uh, field. Most of the Parkinson disease patients can uh, keep so pedaling, keep doing uh, with on the bicycle, and uh, so our aim for developing our design principle for the walking assisted device is let's mimic you know the uh, bicycle, okay, uh, so cycling and by using our walking assisted device during walking. That's our design principle. So when you are pedaling, so you step the pedal and you move the uh, uh, leg and the, uh, from the pedal, so some force and tactile information were uh, you know, given by the pedal, okay? And your brain feels it. And again, you, know, you will uh, uh, try to move the uh, the another the other leg okay this is a cycle of pedaling and so we try to mimic you know try to make this happen uh, in the walking period so with our get assistive system this is the device we design actually and we applied for the pd patients uh, you see here uh, you see here a pneumatic devices okay so this is a pneumatic device Okay, is it working? Uh, yes, uh, with low pressure, so it contracts a lot. Okay, this is actually a collaboration with some company. So company has a, a, a patent. And uh, our system consists of force sensor, uh, insole type force sensor and solenoid valve, a gas cartridge and artificial muscle. Okay, and uh, you know, so how this works? Okay, and it is attached like this. In this case, uh, the pneumatic muscle is working only for the right leg, in this case, okay? In the left leg, uh, foot, uh, there is a force sensor installed. So, uh, according to his walking step, when he, you know, uh, make a step, when he makes a step here, then the, the other leg was actually uh, tactile and also force uh, information. Uh, was given to uh, the other leg by using this pneumatic muscle. I hope you understand. So uh, this makes device makes uh, okay. Okay, so oh, uh, this uh, movie, you know, these movies show the, the effectivity of a working assisted device to some particular Parkinson's disease patient. So in this case, we conducted the experiments in a hospital we are collaborating. And uh, for the upper case, uh, assistive device is not used, was not used. In this case, it was used, okay? And you see, and this Parkinson's disease patient was difficult, ha had a difficulty to uh, stand up from the uh, wheelchair, right? So he had significant problems uh, for sit-to-stand action and also walking. And uh, like, you know, so you, by uh, showing these movies, our walking assisted device, you know, affected you know, very nicely to this patient. So I want to show it again here, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So you see the big difference in walking speed and also turning speed, right? So the, our device is quite light, cheap, and uh, uh, quite, you know, so design principle is quite easy one, but, uh, uh, you know, it is quite effective to working assistance. Okay, so, uh, and you see, you know, he doesn't have any uh, gate freezing here. So actually uh, we haven't, we are still uh, on the way, so uh, to investigate if our walking device actually it really you know decreases can decrease the numbers or frequency of 
the occurring of gate freezing. So uh, it's uh, st still we are investigating, but at least you know. So it uh, you know. So our we have published a paper that uh, it our device worked very good. You know. So uh, uh, you know our uh, device was really helpful uh, to the walk uh, walking uh, phenomenon, walking behaviors of the PD patients. Uh, quite so we, we our device can make it regular for example uh, asymmetrical and also keep the good step lengths okay okay so uh, still um, I'm talking about the uh, walking assist device and this is totally uh, this shows also some additional information okay as I uh, introduced we have developed this walking assist device but one a big problem of this device is uh, that it uses the gas cartridges, okay? The gas, one gas cartridge so far. So, uh, you know, the subjects can walk uh, maybe only for 30 minutes. So uh, it can work for daily rehabilitation for 20 minutes, but uh, it's, it's not sufficient for daily use, long-term daily use. And uh, that's why, so our idea is to integrate it with, you know, this, uh, assistive walking device okay this assistive walker also can assist walking of some patients like pd patients and this can hold actually this can carry uh computers you know and also user interfaces sensors and also gas cartridges and compressors if you want okay so uh, our plan is to combine these devices for long-term daily use uh, rehabilitation and also daily life, daily walking assistance. And uh, in addition to this uh, walking, ah, sorry, sorry, I want to show this short one. Yeah, so like this, we have already developed, you know, some kind of AI. Uh, for this uh, walking assistive device. And you see, so you see some, you know, uh, robot modules, you might see, <laughs> able to see some robotic modules are attached to here. So actually this walker, you can buy this walker in Japan and we attach the, so the additional uh, robot modules to attach, uh, to make it assisted. Okay. Yeah. And so we, so he, uh, my student Abdul Ali, so he has so implemented uh, so other, uh, I mean, user interface and like this, so he can communicate with uh, this assistive worker through a uh, voice, and also our my uh, another student Noel uh, is has helped him also. Okay, so in addition to this uh, working assistive device, uh, we have also my student has also been developing you know so uh, the sensor. Uh, it's it's uh, you know PPG a PPG system to detect the heartbeat, okay, and also heart rate to extract heart rate variability to estimate the uh, autonomic nerves uh, activity. Okay, so uh, such a device is already installed in this kind of wearable device. Uh, if you are watching my monitor, then you can see this. Okay, but uh, uh, oops, okay. But uh, her uh, focus is in so so another perspective. He's interested. Uh, she sorry. She is interested in not the green uh, light, but or, but she is also very much interested in using blue light, and she is working in some scientific uh, uh, studies and science engineering studies by using by developing this new device. Okay. So anyway, what I want to say here is this kind of additional sensors are also can be installed on this on this actuator okay so uh, i hope uh, this walker based healthcare system uh, is uh, can can quite uh, can be quite become very popular so in the near future and uh, you know work out for uh, the pre preventive care so in the super aging societies okay so let me move on to the next issue, that is closing assistance. Okay, this is particularly useful for daily life function assist. And 
Uh, so actually, I started uh, you know, learning robotic cl closing assistance so in the world. My, uh, so we, um, my group uh, started, uh, my group was the first group that starts learning robotic closing assistance in the world. Okay, and the closing assistance is a basic and important assistance activity in the daily uh, life. And need of robotic closing assistance is growing because, so this is an example. Yeah, so actually this is my mother. Yeah, and actually she fell down uh, uh, from the bed and the bone was broken and the shoulder, shoulder, some, some part of the shoulder bone was broken and uh, she was not able to, uh, you know, raise uh, her hand uh, uh, like this. And, uh, you know, except her, so when you are, uh, you know, getting old, usually you get the problem of narrowing, uh, narrowing angle, uh, joint angle problems, okay? So, and uh, it's quite uh, popular and uh, that's why it's a social need, okay? So robotic closing assistance uh, is social need. And also uh, in nursing care facilities, so caregivers take a lot of time for closing assistance. So that's why if we have such a closing assistance, then uh, nursing caregivers can work for uh, some, some other uh, tasks for helping, the, for helping other elderly people in the same nursing care facilities, for example. Okay, so, uh, but uh, uh, it's um, inspired. It's inspired by my mother and also elderly people. So it has certainly uh, major challenges uh, from the academic point of view. So uh, some of the important uh, challenges are interaction of the robot with non-rigid clothes, and description of human clothes relationship is still unclear and and undefined. And safe human robot interaction is required. Okay, those are particular uh, major challenges we need to tackle. And actually, uh, we have been working toward fully automated robotic closing assistance. Okay, uh, as shown here. So it the robot needs to find out the clothes, uh, recognize the clothes. Okay, and it needs to initialize the close state and also its own physical state. And after that, so it, it, it has to dress, okay? And unfortunately, this part is really, the center part is really important. So we were able to, you know, so my, our robot can uh, find and recognize the features of clothes. That's okay. And also it can pick up, uh, you know, so, such an uh, important part of a close, uh, it's possible. And also after, so this initialization phase, the robot can dress, okay, uh, to, to the person, okay? And that's okay. Uh, the problem is here, we are still working in this field, okay, for this task, um, appropriately, so initialize the close state. Uh, I mean, uh, requires manipulation of clothes uh, in a quite intelligent way. Still, uh, the research is going on. Okay, and today, uh, I just want to show you some movies uh, regarding uh, these other, the other two parts. Okay, like this movie, and actually we have all, uh, recent years, we are using deep learning, okay, uh, to, uh, for this kind of visual recognition. Okay, in this case, the color of uh, uh, a shirt was automatically found and uh, the robot is a uh, robot picks it up and throw this. And of course, throwing away is not our uh, aim, but uh, in this exhibition, we have just uh, done, it, done it. Okay, so recognition part is not so super difficult, it's okay. And uh, after, initial, after the initialization part of the close, uh, you know, so uh, we, established the safe control uh, for dressing. And uh, uh, these two Indian students, you know, so Nishant Koganti and Ravi Joshi, those two students have worked uh, very hard for this task. Uh, and uh, actually our dressing uh, control consists of two parts. So one is 
arm dressing uh, phase. Okay, two phases: an arm dressing phase and also body dressing phase. And uh, so, due to the time limitation, I will not go into detail. Uh, but uh, uh, for this arm dressing phase, we apply uh, dynamic movement primitive algorithm. That is uh, also that can give us safe and stable control towards some goal. In this case, the goal is here in you know, a P3, and uh, you know that initially the finger is here P1 finger with a close holding a close is here, and it it, it finds out the uh, <coughs> hand hand tip and el uh, elbow, and it tries to uh, dress arm, you know by uh, uh, so uh, by moving the arms according to the uh, dynamic movement primitive algorithms. Okay, and after that, it tries to dress the body. And in this case, we use other algorithms and uh, for, for safe and complicated motion generation. Yeah. So, uh, this slide, this movie shows <coughs> uh, for, to show our uh, safe control of the arms using 2D latent space. Uh, a bit difficult to explain, but I'll try. Okay, in this case, uh, you see the two-dimensional state space, latent space here, and the cursor is, green cursor is moving, okay? And according to the cursor position, you see different motion, you know, so uh, dual arm motion in the left panel. In this case, uh, it is shown uh, by uh, simulation, but actually uh, the robot can move exactly the same with this, okay? The point here is, so what we have found by applying machine learning technology is very inter was very interesting. Okay, in this case, the robot arms consist of 14 degrees of freedom. Okay, and the task is body dressing. It's co very complicated, and we taught how to do it uh, by uh, directly by direct teaching to this robot, you know, several times. And after that, we apply um, a machine learning method to find out the latent space so of the arm motion, okay? Then, uh, very interestingly, interestingly, two-dimensional latent space is sufficient to explain or to reconstruct the total complicated dressing motion. Okay, again, I want to show it, show it to you again, okay? Uh, blue line actually shows the sample that we taught, and uh, a cursor is moving, you know, in the in the uh, place where we didn't te teach. Okay, so uh, actually, this is this two D space is a manifold for dressing in our task. Okay, after after uh, applying machine learning technology, and that's why this is a manifold dressing manifold. So that's why, uh, you know, even in the point, you know, uh, which is not blue, uh, corresponds to some uh, some kind of uh, dressing motion, okay? Unseen dressing, it can generate unseen dressing motion. That's the point. And so another point is, okay, because this is a manifold, if you are you know so indicating some part of this latent space in at least in this in this region, okay? The motion unseen motion generated here is quite similar to the ones that you taught. So which means you know uh, this space is quite safe space for the control of the dual arms. Okay. So uh, you can control this robot manually by moving the cursor, okay? And the generated motions are all safe. And uh, so other, you know, so machine learning algorithm, for example, uh, reinforcement learning, I will talk about it later a little bit. Uh, reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, you need to explore the space. And by trial and, trial and error, you need to find out some modified motion, uh, dressing motion. Right, but uh, uh, in this case, uh, the reinforcement learning requires to explore only in this two-dimensional state space, which is really uh, effective. 
okay reinforcement learning can get really slower sometimes it requires millions of new trials but in this case we don't need to do it because of this uh, state space okay so i think uh time uh, is uh, passing uh, quite quickly so i need to wrap up as and after this i would like to talk about one more issue so anyway uh this movie is showing uh you know in the last slide i talked about motion space in this slide by this slide i'm talking about close human relationship state okay in this case we are measuring how you know uh, this chart is behaving during uh, dressing okay and after applying uh, again a uh, machine learning technology then again uh, we found a very interesting result so uh you know thousand 3d point clouds you know, having each, each of which has 3D coordinates. So those can be projected onto 2D space during this dressing task. Okay, here you are, again, I want to show it to you. Here, okay. Okay, so actually these 3D, you know, point clouds responds to a part of shot, okay? And for each time, you know, it is, those are projected into one point, okay, uh, on this 2D space. So we can call this, you know, so close human cross, uh, close relationship state, 2D, spa 2D state space uh, in our dressing task. So this is very interesting. So we found out, uh, so in our task, a motion space is quite simple in 2D related space, can be represented in 2D state space, and also uh, close human cross relationship can be represented into this space space. So uh, by this, uh, you know, so by the last slide work, uh, fortunately, uh, we were able to receive the best application paper award from IROS in 2015. And due to the time limitation, I want to skip. Okay. And uh, as I told you, I mentioned briefly, you know, so uh, keyword, uh, reinforcement learning. So adaptive assistance to the changes in the environment is another uh, major challenge in this closing assistance task, or let's say in general, human robot interaction task. Okay, because, uh, you know, so human posture can, can be changed, also can change, right? And uh, in general, uh, some environmental change can happen. And what happens uh, you know, so what, so how the uh, computer agent or robot should behave, should change its uh, behavior to accomplish the goal. So uh, I propose to use uh, reinforcement learning for this kind of task, okay, adaptive assistance. And the goal of the reinforcement learning to maximize the accumulated reward given from the environment. And uh, uh, in the human robot collaboration task, the goal is fortunately shared you know, between uh, by this human and also by this robot. So uh, if the goal, uh, if, the, if the state, achieve the state is close to the goal, then uh, we can define the uh, higher re reward, okay, for this. Yeah, and according to the uh, reward, uh, you know, reinforcement learning algorithm can change the policy of the uh, agent. And policy usually corresponds to the controller for the robot in this kind of task. Okay, so uh, this movie shows a very simple-minded uh, uh, introduction uh, when we apply the reinforcement learning to the, to our dressing task. Now he is teaching how to do it, right? Kinesthetic by kinesthetic demonstration, and. And currently, the robot is automatically doing by using the thought policy, thought trajectory in this case. But unfortunately, it fails. The, the head is not coming out of the, you know, sticking out of the color, right? And now the robot is automatically changing its policy, right? And with a very few trials, the task can be achieved like this, accomplished like this, right? Yeah, so uh, in this case, the initial, uh, the, the, the posture of this mannequin was uh, artificially manipulated, changed, 
to make the artificial, to introduce the artificial failure with the initial policy. But after that, without knowing what we have done, you know, experiment that uh, uh, did, the robot can automatically, was able to automatically change the policy uh, to deal with this uh, change uh, in the posture of the mannequin like this. Okay, this is a very simple uh, experiment, but in general, we can uh, generalize uh, you know, so the use of uh, reinforcement learning. Okay, uh, the so let's let me move on to the final uh, topic, that is about smart life care co-creation laboratory. Okay, uh, before going into the detail of the uh, new laboratory, I would like to know you to know uh, difficulties in advanced care innovation, not invention, but innovation. Okay, so how to introduce the robots into the society. Uh, the robot uh, has to have a good balance of risk cost benefit, but usually it's really difficult. Usually, you know, if you increase the number of motors, then it gets really expensive. And if you, if you want to make it safer and safer, and again, you know, costs get increased, right? And sometimes it's difficult to feel the benefit. Uh, I'm going to talk about it. Um, here okay so sometimes even if you're using wearing the robot and using the robot for your task sometimes it's difficult to uh, feel the benefit from the robot because uh, you know sometimes uh, most of the customers need to feel immediate utility so Im immediate benefit but like you know so rehabilitation like uh, muscle exercise usually it requires long-term use, okay? So, uh, so there is a big problem, okay? Utility becomes clear after long-term use, but uh, so before using it for a long time, they, uh, you know, uh, just just throw away the robot or put it into the gar garage, okay? That's a big problem. And uh, to reduce the cost, so uh, usually industry tries to use mass production method. But unfortunately, so individual uh, necessity is quite different so in this field. So that's why market you know, is segmented. So that's a big problem. So we need to introduce some FabLab-like uh, prototyping method for uh, individual adaptivity, uh, individually adaptive uh, production method. And uh, this is another important issue, but today I want to skip. Okay, so this I can speak, skip, and to uh, solve that dilemma, right? So uh, remember, so uh, balance, cost, risk, and merit is quite difficult. So that's why uh, we need to develop a society. So we need. So what we should do is uh, to involve the users from the beginning. So uh, develop the same idea. Okay, so get I mean the idea together and uh, uh, prototype, create prototype as quickly as possible and evalu evaluate it by the user or, or by the laboratory and also by the user. And such a cycle, if we can run such a cycle, then uh, maybe, you know, we, uh, so our robot, uh, we, we can achieve a, good, a robot having good balance of cost benefit risk. Okay, that's our hope. And I would like to introduce the, uh, our uh, new uh, smart life care calculation laboratory. And unfortunately, lots of Japanese and some Japanese boys, so I reduced the voice amplitude and just, just briefly try to introduce in English. Okay. Uh, I can skip. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, idea generation, right, and the prototyping. And the technological evaluation. So, uh, you know, so, and we have two zones: prototyping zones and also evaluation zone. Okay, now it's showing prototyping zone, and it just shows some example that we can do in this laboratory. So, the message is we can do prototyping, uh, efficient prototyping, uh, in this uh, new laboratory. Okay, and we have very good 3D printer, so uh, that can. Uh, uh, simultaneously print three different types of of, of uh, regions 
transparent resin and also a stiff stiff and or, or soft resin simultaneously right and we have a very good evaluation zone having good motion capturing system wearable and not well wearable uh, wearable motion capturing system like this in this case it's showing a marker based conventional but high highly accurate wearable motion capturing system okay and uh, finally this shows the uh, brain activity uh, measure, measurement device okay so wearable type and uh, in this laboratory we can measure it so if you are interested in this smart life care calculation laboratory please uh, access to the twitter and the youtube and unfortunately twitter is only managed in japanese so far but uh, uh, you can see a lot you can you can be inspired by watching the youtube movie okay and uh, in this uh, here, here, uh, Ravi is here. Uh, by using this laboratory, we have conducted a couple of hackathon already. And in uh, this slide shows uh, the heavy hackathon. Heavy is actually a module, uh, you know, developed so, uh, developed and uh, uh, sold by a company, Heavy Robotics, and it's a US company and uh, a spin-off company of Carnegie Mellon University and we collaborated them and we conducted a hackathon and we did ideathon and uh, we invited nurse uh, people from the nursing care facilities and we together developed the ideas and uh, you know we uh, prototyped and uh, finally after uh, prototyping finally we, we had a presentation time and to select uh, one of the best uh, so a uh, prototype and actually uh, this one you know so this movie shows the a prototype one in this hackathon okay so the idea is food feeding robot and uh, they developed this robot in one day actually from the scratch and this uh, actually uses also connect and also mirror air and also uh, so measurement device, wearable measurement device for electro uh, mirror electricity here, okay? So uh, what is this is doing is to try to, you know, <clears throat> give some food here to the face. And after he generates some uh, muscle activity here, then, then it tries to, uh, you know, uh, pick up. So another food here, okay? So uh, this is just a prototyping and a hackathon event, but uh, they uh, did this. Students, a group of students did this in one day. So this is great. Okay, so and this is the latest, so uh, this is the latest movie showing what we are doing in our new love uh, tree. Okay, again, you know, so, uh, my students developed this uh, so in a day and the point here is they also developed smart uh, you know hand here okay <laughs> so uh, this smart smart finger smart hand yeah let's say smart gripper was composed of uh, you know, uh, so, you know uh, no, 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 was designed and produced by uh, using the uh, very nice 3d printers okay and that can because it's soft it can uh, grab uh, different types of objects without indicating what it is okay or, or the dimension uh, of those objects okay and uh, we this uh, slide can show another our uh, hot integration of the hard robotics and soft robotics it's a 3D printed hand and it's a glove sensor. In this prototyping job, we use different kind of sensors. Right now, I'm using this one to teleoperate this 3D printed hand. Right, okay. So, uh, it, you know, the system consists of 3D printed uh, <coughs> processes and also uh, soft sensor okay so i think it's time it's already 9 p.m so i need to quickly stop <laughs> sorry and i just want to show uh, i have shown the prototyping uh, examples and this 
a movie shows our evaluation zone. Okay. Uh, we have motion capturing system. Okay, and we can measure, you know, what they are doing, you know, so behaving, so in nursing care. In this case, a transfer motion, transfer, okay, transfer task from the uh, chair to the bed. So we can we can measure caregiver and caretaker simultaneously, and this shows the wearable motion capture system. And in and in real oh, to yeah, so in real time, you know, you can now you can see the motion simultaneously, and also uh, he also a caregiver wear wears the foot 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 force sensor too, so it shows the motion and so we are measuring the uh, motion and also foot force simultaneously to un biomechanically understand you know uh, the behavior uh, of the caregiver and also caretaker yeah yeah this shows the foot force distribution okay and uh, we have we are really good at measuring uh, emg uh, electromyograms and also analyze analyze the acquired electromyograms uh, yes uh, this shows uh, lifting motion and also a lowering motion, and we can analyze it biomechanically. Okay, so example study of a care robot. So uh, uh, in this case, this she wears the care robot, and he actually wears uh, the care robot. Sorry, movie is quite uh, so aspect ratio got wrong. What he's doing wearing, and also he's uh, attached you know, these two uh, EMG sensors to the uh, electro uh, spine. Okay, and uh, then uh, during assist and or during no assist, the uh, muscle activities occurred in these, you know, ES muscles are quite different, significantly different. We can find out the effectivity of this uh, assistive device. Okay, in summary, uh, yeah, so today uh, we show a lot of different types of robots. I mean, and we show, uh, you know, I, I talked about uh, many different types of robots for different uh, situations uh, in your in your lifetime, and uh, in particular, I introduced our uh, study in working assist and also in dressing. And thank you for thank you for listening. I would like to close uh, end my talk uh, with this movie by showing you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajiv and Asokan. That's the end. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shibata. Uh, thanks for that very interesting lecture and uh, the interesting work you do to make the life very easy for the elderly people. It's a very, very uh, commendable job. Uh, thank you very much for sharing the information with uh, the TRS members. Okay, now I leave the floor open for questions. Um, I request Rajiv to take care of the questions and then if there are any questions, uh, you can actually put first. Put them put it to uh, Professor Shibata. Okay. In dressing motion, are you considering any resistance from the person need to be dressed? Yeah. So actually, uh, we are not actively using the force control. Currently, use not using the force control uh, to the robot. But actually, the robot itself uh, is quite compliant. And also a basic uh, you know, control program of the robot has a safety function. So uh, during dressing, it, it feels, you know, in particular body dressing, it feels quite strong force you know, exerted by the, the human, human close interaction. Then it automatically stops. Yeah, so that's a safety part. So uh, actually uh, in Tokyo Big Site, uh, we have conducted four days uh, exhibition uh, twice and we so so many people uh, uh, were actually uh, involved in our experiment and there was no accident so it's quite so the dressing uh, we, we we were able to demonstrate dressing for four uh, you know four days uh, quite in a safe manner and successfully okay so thank you that was the question by tanuja next we have a question by Srikant who says who asks, what is the reward in this process of clothing? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a very good question. For that movie, we simply define the success 
was achieved, uh, a reward was given only in the case uh, of the success case. So okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a little bit uh, a far goal, you know. So, but, uh, but also you can, you can imagine some uh, accumula accumulated, some continuous uh, difference between the, some uh, uh, planned motion and also, uh, you know, generated motion. So you, you can design several different types of rewards. Okay. 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 So there is one question which says, have you developed any robot for healthcare workers to work safely during COVID-19 pandemic? Ah, no. <laughs> uh, we, have, we haven't done it. Okay, so that was a question by Debashish. Next, we have a question by Dr. Arun Udai. Okay, we have another question by Dr. Arun. Uh, he asks, which software do you use to show the visualization of robots? Is it VREP or WebOts or something else? So, so, so we, are, we are using uh, ROS. So, and uh, yeah and ROS uh, and also Gazebo, yeah. But also my students can work with uh, Unity yeah, for visualization. Okay. Mm. So there's one question by Shreyash. How does the cloth assist robot deal with ch change in the orientation of human being during the process? Uh, yeah, that's a good question, but we don't assume the subject in this case changes the re orientation drastically. If it's too much, unfortunately, uh, our, our robot can't can't deal with it. But if it is, uh, you know, slight uh, change, then uh, you know, so because it automatically detects the hand tip and also elbow, so uh, dress dress part must be okay. But uh, uh, arm dressing part must be okay. But uh, uh, then uh, body dressing part get a little bit uh, difficult. And uh, in general, so how to cope, deal with it? So we have, uh, we need to combine two ways, right? And we haven't done it, but we, we, were, we can, uh, we can, there is a possibility to deal with it. By combining uh, some heuristic algorithm and also by com combining with, uh, you know, so with also a reinforcement line. So unfortunately, re reinforcement learning is not, uh, uh, you know, so still still some time to deal with the change in the situation, the environment. So we need to combine, you know, we need to use not only reinforcement learning, but also some heuristic uh, algorithm. Okay. Two. And now we do have another one or two, but before that, I would like uh, Professor Ashokan to introduce Professor Shantanu Choudhury, who has joined. Mm -hmm. oh. Hi, Hi Professor Shantanu Choudhury. Thanks for joining. Uh, uh, I know you are very busy with your uh, all, uh, academic and administrative uh, activities, but uh, really good that you could uh, join us. So. Uh, professor, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Shibata knows very well for the Sandhu and both of them know very, very well each other. But uh, I would like to uh, request Professor Sandhu to say a few words about uh, uh, TRS webinar and uh, uh, your opinion about uh, what, what's going on in this webinar series. So you are muted, it seems. Uh, this TRS <laughs> webinar has been a, a very positive development in last one year and we had to be in a position to organize we have been very successful in terms of organizing exciting and interesting business and i i listened to part of shubata's talk and uh, the work that he's doing is really exciting and interesting particularly that of a robo assisted dressing of human beings and other other this uh, use of robo as an assistance to a human being, I think, and the focused and assisted living, I think that's that's a kind of an application. Uh, robotics can have a huge implication on the human life. It is not just a, a kind of uh, industrial production, but touching the life of people who really need this robotic support. I think uh, it's, it's today's 
it has been an exciting, I think, uh, experience for all the listeners uh, looking at Shibata's uh, work and listening from him. Thanks, and I think we can have more discussions. Thank you very much, Professor Chaudhary. Thank you. Yeah, Rajiv, you can continue with the questions. Rajiv, you are muted. Sorry. What was the targeted age group which fits into the experiment? Uh, usually, the, uh, the age is 65 or older. And, uh, but uh, nowadays, because uh, we are quite healthy, even uh, in 60 or 70, <laughs> it's difficult to define but just by age. So that's why we have many, many different types of uh, medical uh, in the indices. Sometimes we use uh, those indices. For example, Parkinson disease people, so they have their own uh, indices, okay? Health healthcare indices. Uh, also, for preventive, preventive care. Uh, so our target is actually uh, frail or pre-fail people. So before going into a serious phase, so, so if they use keep using some, uh, you know, so healthcare devices, then they don't need to get into some care level. In this robotic field, uh, working with frail or pre-frail people are quite rare yet. So uh, I have just started working with them. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think there is one or two more questions we can take because we want to end on time. How haptic feedback can be helpful in assistance as needed control during rehabilitation through exoskeletons? Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, definitely for rehabilitation because our brain is uh, using both uh, control and also sensing simultaneously. So uh, the, uh, that, that's why uh, appropriate feedback you know, haptic feedback is really important. And uh, for example, or a pneumatic assisted uh, robotic device for Parkinson's disease people, the haptic you know, feedback is, uh, you know, is very important. We, we, only, we are not the only person uh, to think about it. Uh, you know, so in the medical field, they also thought, uh, th uh, think so, okay? So uh, in our case, we, give the uh, uh, tactile also uh, some force feedback to the, the place around the knee uh, using our uh, assistive device. But uh, in other studies, you know, so it's not our study, in, in other study, so they apply uh, vibrations to the wrist, you know, in the upper arm actually. And they, the, the, the paper tells uh, it uh, was uh, effective also to suppress the, I mean, to regularize the walking. So because, uh, so for walking and, and also for limb control, uh, periodic limb control, a central pattern generator uh, is working. I mean, it's a, it's a neural uh, pattern generators. So in the spinal cord, it's working uh, for the lower limbs, also upper limbs. And so there are some colorations or some neural connections between the upper limb and also lower limb. So that's why, uh, based on that hypothesis, they apply the vibration uh, to the upper limb. And uh, actually, uh, they, in their paper, it, it says uh, it worked out. So in such a way, so haptic feedback in the rehabilitation uh, is really important. Any other questions, you? I can see one or two in the chat box. Uh, are you taking? We have. I think it is too late for uh, Professor Shibata. Also, it's already 9:30 p.m. I think. Yeah. So maybe uh, we'll uh, uh, collect any other questions. We'll send an email to Shibata, and then maybe we'll get an answer from you later. So I think uh, it's time for us to close. Sorry that we are not able to take any more questions. I request uh, uh, Suril to. Uh, formally thank uh, Professor Shibata uh, for his uh, time and uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Professor Shapen. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank Professor Shibata for sharing his valuable time with us and sharing very interesting set of activities uh, that his group is doing in the area of robot for assisted living. 
and and we look forward to uh, further have uh, webinars with you and and uh, getting to more details of activities that you are doing at, at your place i would also like to take this opportunity to thank the member of organizing committee uh, professor Sir ashokan secretary trs professor shantu choudhury director it jodhpur and president trs professor subir k saha uh, professor it delhi and vice president trs professor rajiv roshana ji uh, kitab kitab di uh, professor amrita Vish, vishwa vidyapitam and professor sudhir ap uh, from nit kalikat who is news leader coordinator of trs and finally i would like to thank all the attendees for their very active and enthusiastic participation in the webinar today and we look forward to your continuous support and participation in the next set of webinars to be organized by trs thank you all with this i hand it over to professor shopan to to offer final thanks i thank uh, professor reshibata once again uh, on behalf of the robotic society and all the members of robotic society and uh, i'm sure that we'll be able to catch up sometime soon and uh, our, our ai 21 is coming up so hopefully you will be able to join us during the conference okay yeah. thank you very much thanks for joining thank you very nice yeah. thank, you. thank you bye thank you professor shibata bye thank you